Hello everybody and welcome to Ian's Kitchen, my kitchen, where together we're going to do some food magic and a little bit of alchemy. Today I'm going to show you how to fillet this beautiful Norwegian halibut. Now this is a farmed fish, so uh, we get them on order. They are slaughtered on order. And it actually used to be a featured ingredient in the Chef World Championships in Lyon, Focus d'Or. So this is a very, very high quality product. There's two kinds of fish. You have the round fish and you have the flat fish. The round fish, like for example, a salmon has two fillets. I'm going to show you that in another video. It's another anatomy. In flat fish, like the halibut, you have four fillets, which you can extract. And a funny fact is that the two eyes, they're both on the same side here. Well, this one's not fully open. Looks like it's been perhaps taken away or maybe damaged, but the halibut starts its life as a round fish and then slowly goes down on side and the eye that's on one of the sides migrates to the other side of the head so that both eyes end up on the same side of the head. Now that's a weird little fact, but I thought it was fun to mention. So when people are filleting fish, they like to use a fillet knife. In my case, I like to use my trusty Japanese high carbon steel knife. Um, it's a little bit flexible, but I like its rigidity. It, uh, and I mean, you, do, you use the knife that you like best. Now, one thing about these fish is they come with their own filleting instructions. You're going to see this line here. It's not as clear on this fish, but it's very clear on others. And basically what you have to do then is just follow that line, stick your knife by the gill with the head and cut down into the spine, into the, into the uh, vertebrae of the fish. You can feel it. Now your fingers are going to be a very, very important tool when you're filleting because they're gonna tell you what's inside the fish. See, when I put my fingers inside the newly made cut, I can feel all the vertebrae in the fish. Next thing we're gonna do is here there's a collarbone. We don't need that. So you lift the fin, you put your knife behind the collarbone and you cut around it. Next thing you do, and sometimes you know you get scales on your knife so that's why I'm just wiping it off. Next thing you do, is you cut the tip of the fillet free Put your knife into the cut, into the opening. Press it down with your fingers. And then from the back to the front. You follow the bones. Well, this knife is quite sharp, so I just nicked a piece of the, of the fillet off. And you cut through the ribs in the ventral area of the fish. What you're left with then is a beautiful fillet, which we're gonna work with, continue working with later. Now we're going to repeat the operation on the top side with the dorsal fillet, which is one of the nicer ones. This is the ventral fillet, which has, well, a piece of the cavity where the intestines used to be. And you cut around the head. You see there's a nice bone here. That's why your fingers are very important. They're telling you what you meet. Instead of you just putting the knife into a piece of bone, you can cut around it if you use your fingers and your sensitivity. Then again, we're going to make our knife flat, cut down the, the ribs of the fish, the ribs. And we start from back to front. Cutting always with a flat knife. Don't go like this, don't go, because you're going to make a lot of marks on your beautiful fillet and you don't want that. You want a nice, clean cut fillet, all right? So, we're going to work our way in there. And voila! Again, what you have here is a nice dorsal fillet. Put it there. And as you can see, there's not much meat left on the bone, but we haven't finished. Because as I said, there are four fillets. 
on this kind of fish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the head. And that's why I like a sharp and also very, very, well, a little bit rigid knife. Just see that? Cut through the spinal column there. And repeat the operation. We're going to take off the head so that the fish is laying flat on the, uh, on the cutting board. So we're cutting around the collarbone as we did the last time. Now we're cutting around the head as we did the last time. And what's going to be different here is that when we're done cutting around the head, it comes straight off. So now the fish is flat, much easier to work with, and we can repeat the operation. This is the ventral fillet, the one that comes from the tummy area of the fish. And we're just open, opening it up. Watch out that you move the fillet out of the way because you don't want to be cutting into the same fillet that you've just been uh, freeing from the bone. And when you get to the ventral area, make sure to cut through the ribs. Like so. Again, got this nice fillet. When I put them on top of each other, usually I don't put the skin against the meat because the skin has a different bacteria culture than the meat has. So you will be prolonging the life of your fillet if you're going to keep it in the fridge. If you put, my, my rule of thumb is always flesh on flesh, skin on skin. And so here, flat knife again. And now you can really see where the knife is working. You have the vertebral column there, the vertebra. And so you work your, your way in first, separating the first part of the fillet from the vertebra. And then with a flat knife, this is why I like these long, very sharp knives, because you get clean cuts. If you're using small knives, you can get uh, perhaps not as clean and neat a cut. And I actually appreciate nice clean cuts. I do. So. Lay the fillet over again so that you're not cutting into the fillet. If you have it this way, you're cutting into it on the way out. So they lay it over again, hold it, cut against the bone, and voila. You have your bones here, not much meat left on them. And you have your beautiful, clean halibut fillet, which, again, as I said, flesh to flesh and skin to skin. Some people cook fish stock out of these bones. You can, but a word of warning. Halibut is not the best, the best fish stock fish because it has what I would say is a lot of collagen. So it's going to give you a grainy mouthfeel. So watch out for that. Um, but you can. I ate a very good halibut soup the other day. So there's no, uh, there's, there's no rule of thumb that says you can't use this. Just beware. Don't boil it too much. Don't cook it too much. And try to avoid that grainy feel in the mouth. So I'm just going to put the bones here while we clean our workstation, and then I'll show you what we do with these fillets. All right. So, now we've got a nice clean workstation again. What we're gonna do is, we lay our fillet flat, and then again, we take our beautiful long knife. This is another reason why I like long knives. Watch this. Grab the tail, pinch it, so that you have a good grip on it, yeah? Then you cut with the tip of your knife down to the skin and angle it flat. If your knife is too steep or it has too steep of an angle, you're cutting too much into the skin, you might just go through to the other side. So once you've gotten to the skin side, flatten it out and then start, instead of doing this short sewing motion, then you start making long cuts while holding on to the skin and pulling simultaneously. So it looks like this, okay? Like so. 
Now we have the skin. If you want, you can use it for stock. And what you have here is a little bit of bones from the fins. You can take that off, clean it off. Like so. Put that in the stock. One very, very particular characteristic of flatfish is they have the skirt, which is this. It is a row of fat and muscles that moves their, the fins as they swim along. Now, I love to make bacon out of this. Sounds weird, right? Fish bacon. But when you cook it, slow cook it in butter, and then have a little bit of salt and pepper and sugar on it, and then uh, smoke it, you get a very, very cool fish bacon that you can use, finely chopped, on different uh, amuse-bouche, like appetizers and stuff. The other thing that you have to watch out for is on the tip of the fillet, you have this row of bones here. So if you serve your, your halibut that way, you are going to get the row of bones and nobody's gonna like getting that in their mouth. So what you do is you just gently cut it off and this can go in stock too. Another thing that you can watch out for is on the back side, if you have cut too close to the skin, you're gonna get some of this brown and silver skin on the back of your fillet. Now, if you're very, very detail-oriented and this is a Michelin star restaurant or something of the sort, you take your very sharp knife and you clean, it, clean the back side of the fillet by pulling it through. As you can see here, it comes off nicely when you have a nice, sharp knife. Which I recommend all of you to take care of having. Sharp knife saves you a lot of pain, heartache, and bad work. So see here, just lightly taking off the silver skin, like so. And here you have it, a oh, beautiful halibut fillet, which you can use for all kinds of things. If you're gonna use it for sushi, just freeze it 24 hours before, in case you need to kill the anisakis worm, which is a possible parasite which you have in flatfish and other fish. So if you're gonna serve it raw, good to serve it, uh, to freeze it 24 hours before, in more than, or less than 20 degrees, uh, minus 20 degrees centigrade. So 21, 22, 23, 24 degrees centigrade would be amazing. And that's how you do it. Oh, by the way, you do have the other fillet, the ventral fillet as I like to call it. Some people might disagree. What you do with that is the same operation. So, you know, hold on to the tail and cut into the fillet and the meat and then separate while slowly pulling with slowly pulling from the tail upward in the skin like so get rid of that now what you do have in these is this ventral part which is not useful to us in any capacity so usually i just take it off and we use it for uh, stock as well soups and such another thing you can do if you have the time and the patience is to cut the meat for example cut the bones off and then cut it this way because you are going to get quite a nice portion of meat from the ventral area with some of that good halibut fat but what you don't want is that silver skin on the inside okay so you can do like so and you can use these little pieces. You can freeze them if you're doing a lot of halibut throughout the year. You can actually keep all these pieces in the freezer and eventually make fish cakes with them. That's another thing, fish and crab cakes. So it's good not to waste. This is very good meat actually with a nice amount of fish fat. And here you have it. You have the ventral fillet. Ventral and the dorsal, and the dorsal fillet, fillet of the halibut. The little flap 
the ventral flap, which you can cut up and use for fish cakes together with other things. You can use it together with crab, with scallops, with salmon. I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. Thanks a lot for joining me in my kitchen today. It was a pleasure to have you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.